welcome, 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 all good fighters. Good morning. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> With the connection, intention, and purpose, that only BJ and BB can pass down. <laughs> Is that, is, that, is that sacrilegious to say? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a little. I don't know. Maybe a little. I definitely don't think they're we going to. We have the intention to live up to the giants of the shoulders we stand upon. Well, I mean, uh, for our profession, definitely applicable, at least like early on, right? We're like, you had a bunch of people trying to go off and do different, uh, you know, trying to tell their version of chiropractic or like, trying to like, tell like BD or BJ that they were wrong, right? And obviously <laughs> those models did not uh, continue on. But I don't think that they're the only people in history that were connected to or connect had that connection, intention, and purpose, right? Like there's plenty of uh, examples of individuals who were operating in that flow state with an eight, you know? Or uh, um, I think in some cultures, it's, they're called indigo children. Have you ever heard of that? What? Indigo children. Have you ever heard of that? Oh. Um, I think it's like something like they're children of God that like they're especially gifted in uh, in their connection. Like, that they not, uh, not Aryan race type of deal. No, 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 oh, okay. not, not Aryan race. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna clarify. Um, I don't know. I, I it's like uh, more. I, it's definitely more of a spiritual thing. Uh, I think it's in uh, – I'm going to mess it up. But I think Elbert Hubbard said something about, like, uh, there being geniuses, like the difference between, like, oh, yeah. and, and, like, you and me isn't, you know, anything physical. It's more of, like, a connection, attention, and purpose type thing. But there are people that are, like – They are able to from birth that are gifted. Right, able to tap into something different. Speaking of naturally gifted, I just saw today there's some somebody starting at Palmer that's 19. Um, they have two semesters of like undergrad to finish, and then they hope to graduate as a as a doctor in 2022. Jeez, isn't that wild? Yeah, that's man. Smart. Talk about having your yeah. stuff together. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. That would been. That would have been nice. No, sorry. Not graduate by 2022, because that'd be next year. That'd be impossible. <laughs> that sounds like, whoa. No, okay. Graduate by the time they're 22, which would be, I mean, that's still a, a feat, you know? Like, dang. For sure. That's I think cool. we had people in our class that graduated that were, like, 22. So. That's insane to me. That's coming out of school when I was 26, 27. I was like, dang. Man, if I, five like, years off the clock would have been nice. <laughs> he he coming into Palmer workload at nineteen, not a good. Oh, thing. I would have been toast. Not a good thing. <laughs> no, not even just Palmer workload. It would have been the doctorate plus a, the couple of semesters of undergrad too. Bro, I mean, I I like to believe Bro, myself in a lot of things. Maybe hey, maybe I've changed. But uh, the mentality of Nash and uh, nineteen years old at undergrad. Wasn't ready for it. <laughs> uh, well, I was also at junior college, so uh, a little <laughs> different workload. For that, like, so for all you students out there, you naturally gifted and not so naturally gifted, keep on your path. Yeah, right. So, dude, I'm excited for today's talk. Today's talk, for if you guys don't know, we're going to be talking about breaking the wheel with the chip on your shoulders. And we're going to dive into a little bit about what that means, but... Uh, it's something that Dr. Nash and I have been talking a, a lot about recently. I'm going to try not to get emotionally triggered because of recent events uh, that have taken place. We come at it from an objective yet, um, I think, necessary standpoint. Zen. Zen mode with intention. Engaged. Zen mode engaged. <laughs> Zen mode engaged. But um, – Today's key, so breaking the wheel with a chip on your shoulder. First off, shout out to Dr. Zev. Um, if you don't follow him on Instagram, I'm going to shout out or follow him on Instagram right now. Um, real cool cat. Had the pleasure of talking to him a couple times, and he would always say, you know what, like as chiropractors, we have to have a chip on our shoulder. We have to have a chip on our shoulder. We have a chip on our shoulder. And, and you know, I didn't really get it until you start experiencing different um, 
healthcare professionals that do not have the same opinion as you or do not have the same even philosophy that the body can heal itself opinion as you. Um, uh, or even ones that try to do what you do, aka some of the PTs that are manipulating out there. Yes, I said it. <laughs> um, and manipulating but, is like a perfect term though, right? I mean... Well, well, yeah. I mean, like, they pretend like it's the same. Dude, I had a PT talk to me the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, I adjust too. No. No, you don't. No, you don't. It is different. Yeah. They can manipulate. That's fine because, I mean, like, whatever. They're doing their thing. But don't ever call it the same thing as adjusting. They're very, very good. We actually touched on that in, like, part two. Well, I mean... Uh, two or three. I guess it, if you want to get technical about it, uh, T-ball players are playing baseball, but they ain't playing the game. <laughs> Dude, that is a perfect analogy. I'm going to say that next time. I mean, for real, though. It's true. Right, like, yeah, you play baseball, but you don't play for the it's not LA the baby, Dodgers, baby. right? It's not the babies. <laughs> but that being said, uh, I think it's important for, first and foremost, you young chiros out there, chiropractic students, and even um, – I mean, you can transfer this into other professions as well, I guess. It's just very particular to us as chiropractors. Having a chip on your shoulder because we are not people's first choice. We are not people, most of the time, we are not people's um, primary go-to, even in their line of thinking, um, depending on what it was. And so um, we talk about this this wheel, Dr. Nash, of um, – should I tell the, like a little bit of the backstory or? Oh yeah, you know, yeah, go okay. for it, bro. So, for those who don't know, I practiced in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and it was funny because I had two instances in the same day of a uh, little bit different scenarios, but still the same kind of thought process, you could say. The first one being that um, we have a, a young girl that came into us with Crohn's, um, and we. So we deal with some certain autoimmune conditions, different things like that. And for those who don't know, the wellness way we do some food allergy stuff. Um, I think it's important to remove some of those toxins from the body. And this young girl had, um, oh, geez, she had a lot. She had at least like 30 um, IgG pathway um, antibodies and then also IgE, maybe like three or four. So she had a lot of, of tox, you know, they're toxins in the body. They're, the body sees them as a foreign invader, toxin inside the body, okay? Um, and she wasn't, I didn't even present a plan of care um, for different things. I was just like, hey, this is what we're looking at, recommendations um, going from here. Now, they were seeing another Cairo, but I was, you know, I wasn't trying to like steal him or anything like that, but I was just like, hey, does he address this, that, and the other thing? just to make sure they're taken care of, right? Um, and so long story short, like they just couldn't financially afford stuff. So we didn't really proceed with care. Um, I don't even know if that's considered a patient if you just kind of read test results and tell them your recommendations, but they don't take it. I was always told that uh, as soon as you talk to them on the phone, they're somebody that you're serving in a way, so. That's true. Okay. And, and I'm always down for that. I'm always down to serving for sure. Um, but anyways, long story short, this, her doctor for Carlos, her GI doc was basically like asking for more information from me because he did not believe what I was doing to be um, applicable to her condition. And yet her getting a shot a Humira every week that she has to do herself is. So that being said, um, you know, I got an instant chip on my shoulder because I knew in the, the way that the mom had related to me was made it seem like he was actually looking for information, but he wasn't. Um, it was kind of more of a condescending thing about how, you know, what we do doesn't work, you know, all this kind of stuff. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I was going to heal her Crohn's, but what do we know? That we re remove subluxation, we remove the body from an environment of stressors. What happens? It heals, right? Okay, so that's the first scenario. So scenario one where the doc was just like, he wasn't about it. He didn't want to hear what I had to say. He doesn't really want to um, have a different perspective, I guess you could say. 
on the scenario. So there's that part. Then the second part was um, another lady that I had talked to on the phone and she was interested in care because she had some specific sinus flow issues, different things like that, which if you know, like we, you know, I'm looking at Oxbow C1, C2 all day with that, right? Um, I was really excited for it and different things like that, but then her husband, I, who I guess is in family practice, is what she said um, as a doc, told her to go through her primary care before me, which I don't even know what they're going to do for sinus stuff besides give her maybe maybe an antibiotic, maybe a, I don't even know. Um, but, and guys, these, both of these scenarios don't seem like much. Maybe you're like, it's like, okay, you can brush it off and not get two weeks, whatever. But since it happened the same day, I was probably like a little bit pissed and I, I messaged Dr. Nash and I'm like, dude, what is people's obsession with their, with their MDs or with their, the medical model that we know today, and don't get me wrong, there's not bad doctors out there. There are some bad doctors out there for sure. There's some good doctors out there. But the medical model that we know is not working. It's just not. And so we talked about that paradigm shift um, and everything. And so first off, Kairos, have to, you guys have to have a chip on your shoulder to be like, okay, um, I don't want to say like almost the enemy, but they are, you know, to, a, to an extent, it's people out there that don't have the same thinking to you. So you have to have that chip on your shoulder to fight for what you believe, to fight to say, hey, the body has the power to heal itself. Why are we looking outside in all the freaking time? It has not worked. It will not work. Um, and, and nothing else can, can take place of a name, you know? So have a little bit of a chip on your shoulder to be like, okay, we know, we know what we're doing, have confidence and certainty in what you're doing and fight for it. We gotta, we gotta fight the good fight, good, good fighters out here, man. Every day, man, for real. That's yeah. like, uh. I don't know. It's it's a, it's a real world lesson, right? I mean, not oh, anything yeah, that. Uh, I mean, depending on where you go to school, I think uh, that can definitely have a factor with how much uh, dose of the real world that you get. Which I mean that in like a good way. So um, we were lucky enough to go through Palmer at a time where we were getting a good, decent dose of the real world. Um, the philosophy, the um, you know, the, the people who preach true chiropractic, they were there. Um, now I'm not 100% sure what that's going to look like here um, post-COVID and uh, you know just like there are certain uh, things that are kind of way out the door for certain schools so I'm not saying one way or the other but uh, I don't know but I do think that that's a that's a lesson that it's it's really hard to understand unless you almost like live through the experience so we're yeah. having something like that we just talked about where um it's not that, uh, I mean, like, there's a pedestal in a way that that, that's, that uh, MDs are propped up, propped up on. And it's... How do, you, how do you think they got to that state, though? You know, because, like, I, I feel like MDs are one of those things where, like, they can do no wrong even when they do harm. You know what I mean? Like, right. I've got some uh, really interesting statistics from uh, this book by Bruce Lipton that I highlighted last night. Um, so, uh, is this the biology belief? Yep, yep. Some real, and it's super uh, relevant to what we've been talking about. Hey, yeah. source dropping in, baby. I know, for real. 100%. I love it. So, <laughs> a more recent study. Uh, so, this book was written in 2005. So, right. the, the updated version, I have the 2015 version, but this is a 2003 st statistic. So, um, a little bit dated, but. Still very, very relevant. So a, more, uh, a recent study based in 2003 showed the results of a 10-year government survey of statistics that came up with some pretty dismal figures. The study concludes that iatrogenic illness is actually the leading cause of death in the United States, and that adverse reactions to prescription drugs are responsible for more than 300,000 deaths per year. <laughs> Wild. Do you know how many, do you know how quick we would be ushered out the door if we 
had 300,000 deaths on our hands per year. Well, 300, right? Like, there are 300 people dying per year. Alarms would be going off. Like, Wait, is it 300 or 300,000? If we had 300. If Just we, 300. Yeah. yeah. Not like literally 1% <laughs> number. So, dude, what the heck? Yeah, that's a wild one. That was a really wild one. I read that and I'm like, you wow. Know, that was a government study. It's not like that was uh, backed by a, a group of really uh, wealthy chiropractors. I'm surprised that saw the light of day, man. Cook, cooking the books of their own study, right? I mean, that's like yeah. the other, you know, it, it's funny you talk about the doc that was like, oh, show me the evidence or, you know, show me the research. It's like, dude, research is like we talked about last night. It is great. It is a great tool. It's a tool. Great tool. But it is not like a hard, fast rule for always being a 100% or not even 90% always true. I mean, mm-hmm. data can be manipulated. Like, so, I mean, it's, it's super, super easy that they can do it, especially when you have a lot of money and you're kind of you back, in, money. You're back in the research, right? I mean, um, the one I, that like I just always sticks in my mind is with statins. So yes, the, dude. the initial research on statins was like, oh, um, so 68 people, you know, a study of 68 people with heart attacks and um, 68 people not taking statins. And then uh, out of the 68 people who were on statins, only, you know, 35 of them had uh, a heart attack. So I was like, oh, so like 50% of people can have reduced heart attacks. But the real statistic was that that was a part of a larger group of the study. So it was actually like... 35 people out of like 6,000 versus 58 yep. people out of 6,000. Yep. So really that know? was like 1.2% versus a 50%. And they, they like the, that's just like one example. You know that there's, I think it's a systematic review, but don't quote me. But talking about those that were on a statin and those that had high cholesterol that were not on a statin, uh-uh. The people that were on a statin died quicker. Died early. Wow. That's like, wild. The statin industry, dude, you know that on the head, is whack. Dude, it's so it bad. It's incredibly flawed, and it's incredibly um, misguiding people, for sure. And, and bro, the, the real, the real um, excuse my French, but we might have to bleep this out later, but the real fucked up part is, um, <laughs> bro, these same... And like I get it, uh, to, you you get somewhat of a pass if you're uh, an MD and you're um, if you're prescribed medication and you have some sort of uh, ignorance is not the right word, but you are uh, in, in a way you're Falling willing to be blind. Yeah, you get you get a slight pass, but not much because you do take a Hippocratic oath, just like yeah. we do, to above all else do no harm, and that is like if you want to talk about looking at research, man, look at research. You gotta look at both sides, so. Um, for your, for your guy, your MD friend to, uh, to sh- say, show me the research, man, look at the research on Humira, right? Like, what are you doing in this? Dude, what, is, what is, what is Humira? It's an immunosuppressor. Yeah. What do you think that girl's going to end up with? And if she takes 30 years yeah, and that's a long time, that's a grace period, but even 30 years, you know, like if you suppress the immune system long enough. What's going to happen? We all know. Cancer. Um, another really good portion that I was going through last night was, uh, so, you know, kind of big picture stuff, but um, he does a, so Bruce Lipton, talk about he, he's the author of the book. He, he starts off with uh, kind of how he, in his opinion, biology and chemistry, physics, how we kind of got in this position where, we really value the material uh, yeah. of, of not just reality, but results and everything's very linear. So um, with the, with Newtonian physics, that, that's like the foundation of kind of what a lot of people operate on nowadays. And it's pretty outdated. So in Newtonian physics, it was believed that the atom was like the smallest matter or particle of matter that like everything in between was just a matter of finding out what the measurements were. But as you right. dive deeper into the atom, they soon began to realize that 
it wasn't the smallest piece of matter or that like um, it was actually divisible to more than just being just an atom, right? That's where you had like protons, electrons, electrons, electrons. electrons. Yeah. and um, so this is getting more into quantum physics. And um, so as you get closer to it, like looking at an atom, the closer you get, it starts to um, like, if you get like, you know, from like a far away view, it looks solid. The closer you get, it starts to look like a, almost like a hazy, dusty ball. Yeah. And as you get close, like once you get to like the surface level, you don't see anything at all. Because yeah. Most of it is just space and atoms, like they, they function in a really, really interesting way to where they show properties like having weight and mass like matter does, but they also expend or they have like waves like energy does. So they behave like that. Yeah. And, so, and so there's a vibration aspect to it. A hundred percent. And um, so that is like a, um, one of like the foundation or foundational problems with how a lot of things are being uh, indoctrinated into like, not just education, but just like society of viewing health and, you know, our material or our, you know, our perceivable universe as, 100% matter when yeah. the difference between me and that chair across the room is our frequency and our vibration, right? Like we're both in a way, nothing but, you know, space, yeah. but, but the way that the, our waves are vibrating is much different. Right. So right. Uh, he made a pretty cool picture analogy where, and like the medical model, they really, it's almost like a, he could he describe it as like a, an assembly line that they view health. So A relates to B, B relates to C, B relates to E. And if you have a problem with C, you just um, correct the problem at C, you know, by inject, you know, say you have too much acid reflux, you give them a, you know, medicine to reduce the amount of acid they're producing. And that uh, effectively, creates harmony within the linear view of health. But um, with how matter, I mean, the atomic structure of atoms and just like the, how the body communicates between cells, it goes a lot deeper than I even really gave the really, really brief overview. But it's much more unified than a linear model to where it looks more, let's see if I can pull up a picture. Like that. Oh, I gotcha. So each one connects to different things instead yep. of A plus B. But yeah, yeah. So that's money. By impacting it's kind of pentagram, me, but it's money. Yeah, <laughs> right. I know. I know. In a way, I was like, e, maybe you could add <laughs> one more letter to that equation. So right. Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> probably gonna look a little bit better. Yeah. But I like that too because, and that's that's one thing that I I like about what we do is that. Um, the, I guess, cure or treatment or, um, shoot, manipulation of the, someone's body is not on us. You know, I don't, I don't want to go in and try to give somebody some drug because I think that their body needs an additional fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. You know, all I want to do is to remove whatever stress is causing this person not to have a flow properly, you know, um, find the minus, not, not seek to add. Um, so it takes that, that, that linear thought process in, in terms of like, okay, it's not just like A plus B equals C, it's a constant evolution of what are we trying to find? What are we trying to seek? What are we trying to eliminate that causes us to be disengaged from our true self health or physical, spiritual, whatever. Um, so I like that model a lot, actually. That's yeah, cool. dude. Um, it's uh, really, really, really good. I mean, if anybody is interested, it's a book you can get Bards Noble, so. Yeah. Like I said, we need to get that book fun going. Cause I know, man. Books. We got a, the we got library a doesn't cut it. I can't draw on it. I can't keep it. <laughs> oh, you can. 
Well, I can, I guess. Yeah. Speaking of, I think I might have a late fee up on my from my becoming supernatural. Right? Okay. Um, but yeah, dude, this model of um, I don't even know how to describe it, but this model of adherence to a certain group of healthcare providers. Yeah. I mean, it literally like their specialty, like isn't health, right? Like that's a, uh, that should be. It causes a man to die. Right. I mean, that's like, that should be rule number one that like, I mean, I'm not going to act like I know how to remove a tumor from somebody, right? Like that's just not even my, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not even my, uh, my lane. So in a way, like, dude, you guys got to like, people got to understand that there are lanes too. And yep. for that, for people to just like really assume that there's just one lane of like who can help you and who can help you get on a path to health, to better health. Like that's, that's one of the big problems too. Um, yeah. Any one person putting too much faith in any one entity or person. And, and talk to, uh, I mean, anybody that's in metal, medical school or going to medical school, the amount of people graduating that are be that are graduating as just like general MDs is becoming so small. Yeah. Be because the lack of um, success. I mean, a lot of people don't have fulfillment and a lot of the, the money's not even there anymore. I mean, outside of being like a puppet for a pharmaceutical uh, company. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them are specializing into like different arenas. Like that's just like the, um, the, the current path for, for a lot of uh, MDs and in a way that's like, Oh, I'm, you know, like in a way they have no problem referring to like their other MDs in like another lane. Right. right. But they don't give the same respect to people who didn't graduate from a um, allopathic medical mm -hmm. school. Yeah. That really relies in that uh, linear view of a human body, a human experience and human health. Well, I think there's two factors to that, too. And one of it is being that they kind of lost, um, I don't want to say respect for the patient, but they let the, they let the what is it, the inmates run the asylum in yeah. a way because people want to come in. I have high blood pressure. I have high cholesterol, all this kind of stuff, you know. What do I need to do? Well, instead of saying change your diet, because if the person doesn't want to do that, take this med. Which, so we have, and I always told Sean tell this, like if I was ever to be an MD or like that side of the, the pillow or whatever, um, the emergency department would be the only place that I feel like would be fulfilled, fulfillment, you know? You're trying to save someone's life in the moment. But we always talk about it in the two factors, like the medical approach should always be the fireman. You know, they're 911 emergency. You have something wrong immediately yep. it needs to be taken care of. I don't want to deal with a heart attack. I'm not trained. We're not trained in that. Right. Or taking out a tumor or whatever. Yep. But what do you do after that? Because what you do after that, they give you some type of statin, some type of heart medication which is equivalent to a fireman just standing outside of your house, spraying your house down every day Yep. with the hose. They're using the same tool that's supposed to, supposed to be for emergency for everyday life, which it doesn't work. So this whole, this whole wheel of, I was going to say wheel of fortune, but this wheel, fortune. Of, wheel of misfortune health, I guess you could say. Um, it's just funny to me, man. It's funny because I don't know, and maybe I just need to get more into that thought process, but as to why we do what we do and why patients, again, the patient psyche of too, is like, okay, well, if you want to breed health, like it's not found in the pill. Yeah. hundred <clears throat> percent. I think, uh, about human history though, too. Health was like a really weird, I mean, honestly, it really wasn't a weird thing to, to some extent. I mean, uh, reading through, um, there's two books that kind of goes through like the history of like health and healing and even starting with medicine. 
Um, one of them being the chiropractic story by Marcus Bach. That one's really good. If you ever have a chance to get into that that book. I never uh, heard of that. Uh, yeah. That one's really sweet. He was a friend of uh, BJ's, I know for sure. He's got a chapter in, I think, The Bigness. And the other one being, um, oh, what is it? By Manly Hall. Uh, it'll come to me. But, Sounds really familiar. Well, even like Hippocrates, right? He's got that like timeless line of um, the the human frame, the human frame being the foundation, you know, and movement is medicine, like all these different uh, axioms of what health actually is. And those stem from like older principles and what people really think about. Um, but in a way, mm -hmm. some sex and like SECT, like groups of yeah, yeah. healers it was like a it was almost like magic right where like you needed to find that that herb to like bring about health in a way and like all these different and like it was different back then when uh it was to find like a herb that I could maybe alleviate some symptoms oh that was right. that, that that's real even some today but um now with the people got skin in the game with uh pharmaceutical companies who give some uh, postgraduate education to uh, MDs about their, you know, they, they send out reps for their pharmaceutical company who essentially. Those reps make bank too, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They, they're out there to, they're, they're out there selling bro. Um, and you know, that they, they pre present to MDs and whatever, and like give them their uh, free education on their product. Right. And, uh, and, and essentially like check. yeah exactly so um i think in a way it's kind of like been a almost like a slow drip of like kind of just consistency by yeah. by pharmaceutical companies yeah but it's like they, they've really understood quickly that um you gotta you know let the in, you know inmates run an asylum essentially right to where yeah. Quick fix is like what people think they want. They think they want it because we're still plugged in into the matrix, man. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing Dr. Raj used to talk about this. I mean, it was probably from eight years ago because it's on YouTube. I'll have to figure out what it's called, but I think everybody should watch it. It's basically Dr. Raj talking about purpose. Mm. Um, and if you can find it on YouTube, I'm pretty sure it's at the Florida Convention. But it's really cool because he talks about his purpose. His, his um, mission in life is to help people avoid any unnecessary medication or surgery, which first off is just like a solid foundation to, to be built on. But he was talking about how, how many people died from opioid drugs every day. And it was like the equivalent of, I'm, I'm almost positive, it was seven jumbo jets a day. Don't quote me for those listening, but I'm pretty sure that's Hold what him. he. I'm pretty sure that's what he said. And if it wasn't seven a day, it was still a big number or whatever it was. Yeah, you know, and it's just it's. You know, there's so many people that are out there that are hurting, suffering, and they have lack of hope. You know, and even more importantly, as chiropractors, I talk, and I, I did want to touch on this real quick before we go. Have a chip on your shoulder. But don't forget to restore hope to your patients. Totally. Because that's what makes us different is not the fact that we have a chip on our shoulder so much that we, we get so tunnel vision with, oh, MDs suck, um, your doctor's stupid, like all this kind of stuff. That's not our goal. Have a chip on your shoulder to, be, to fight for your own, but don't let it interfere with you restoring hope to the patient because one – I see it time and time again, man. Okay, here's a great story. I had a lady that called in yesterday, five minutes before close, right? And she she called in and she was, because we were running ads for our, for our talk um, this week. And she called in and she was like, I just wanted to learn more about what, what um, cause we do our inflammation talk, which basically breaks down to three T's essentially. Um, mm -hmm. Inflammation, this is something that people can connect to more. But 
we, she called in and, and she was like asking questions and she just seemed very upset, very like taken back. And I was like, and she was like, well, I just found out I have lupus, like all this kind of stuff. And, and I asked her, I was like, did you just like find out like today? Cause she was just like, you could just tell just emotionally distraught. And she was lacking answers. She just was super, super frustrated, hurt, different things. So we need to have that chip on our shoulder to say, hey, like, you know what? There's, we believe that your body has the power to heal itself. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not going to like me. I'm not going to cure her lupus in, in one adjustment, right? Yeah. But we're definitely going to remove factors that are going to be triggering it. And for her, and she just lacked hope, lacked um, the ability to see past this diagnosis she has been given. And we have to restore that hope. So I just I just sat there and talked with her like, hey, it's going to be okay. Like, the answers are out there. And I'll do my best to send you what I have. Um, because we have a lot of resources that talk about autoimmune conditions in general. Um, and she's like, okay. And she was asking kind of what we do in our office and stuff like that. And one of my best friends growing up, her, his mom had lupus. Um, it's not something that you have to be debilitated from every day. You know, there's hope. So as a Cairo, don't lose that, that restoration factor for, of hope because they don't get that anywhere else. Yeah, and life's not predictable in like a good way. That like, don't try to put yourself within the confines of what somebody else who doesn't live in your body or even what you might think in your right. own conscious mind what you think is possible and what's impossible. I've had a, I've been lucky enough to serve people who were really uh, not set. So it's not the right word, but they're really co almost committed to like having surgery on like uh, one, one person comes to mind. She's really set to having surgery on her wrist. And um, I'll just tell her. Really cool. Yeah. I was just talking with her and um, like we always talk about body has this amazing innate ability to heal. And that's what we're, we're designed to survive, thrive and heal. And it's not anything that, you know, I'm flicking the switch. I'm, I'm turning the light on in the room. I'm flicking the switch, but I'm not producing the light. That comes from inside. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm nobody to say what's possible, what's impossible. And I just ask that you give me the time to help you uh, have that light on in the room so you can clean it up, so your body can clean it up. Um, and that was about, it was about two months ago. So, um and, and that, that was something that, you know, she didn't even really even know it was like an, an option, right? Like it's not even yeah. an option to maybe try something that you don't have to always have, go to surgery, right? And, um, I, you know, that's just something that I had a, one of the massage therapists in the building come up and say, like, that's just like such an awesome message. Not everybody in the building has that same outlook. as, as mm -hmm. you know, I just really want to say thank you for um, taking the time it's to really try free to free. help. So... I don't know, as part of the wheel process, right? Like surgery is such like a last, like, that should be like your very last option that you seek out, right? Or taking medication should be the, the last option that you seek out as like um, your solution to a problem. Because it's, it's the expedient fast route that isn't gonna get you to the ultimate goal of like the destination that you wanna get to, which is a true solution to the problem. I like what you said. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt that. Good. Um, I like what you said there about asking for time because I think that's a very crucial part in the patient process that you're talking about because you could have been very vague with it, but you let her know like, hey, it's going to take time, but I'm willing to dish it out if you're willing to give me that time, which is really, really cool. Um, and it's something that I don't think we ask our patients for enough. Is like, hey, just give, give me time, you know, and and money, I guess, to pay for. It. <laughs> but time. We don't talk about that in here. Huh? I was just kidding. I said we don't yeah. talk about that here. Yeah, you gotta pay the bills, but 
I mean, dude, if, if I could adjust, there's been moments, because when I went down to Honduras for that mission mm-hmm. trip, there's been moments where I was like, dude, I could just open up a shop and charge like a dollar an adjustment. And I feel like I would be happy now I'm doing it, you know? Totally. You know? So it's simple life. There are a thousand people a day. Dude, that would be awesome. They don't have chiropractic down there, so. You... <laughs> Pay me in food, I'm good. Wood. Huh? Pay me in food, I'm good. Pay me in food? Yeah. Pay me in food and coffee, because they got some good coffee down there. I didn't even know that. I've never been there. I need to go. Oh, yeah, dude. We'll go. We'll go. Trust. Um, but, yeah, I just thought that was really cool how you, how you phrased that. And, like you said, just that – that message which is one thing that i love about social media is you can get that message out there even though I, as much as i hate being connected to it sometimes i love the message being able to start out so um all right you probably have to head out here pretty soon right i got like maybe like five more minutes you know it's nothing right. like a big big rush for so um yeah so ultimately though bro um uh, she's been like very happy with uh her process and her care so far you know it's it, and the thing is it's not like a uh life's always about like everything we do that's that's substantial it's always about the journey not, not the destination right mm, yeah in a way it is also kind of changing um or shifting how not just we not even just like the people, our family but like the people around us how you really can look at your body and health that it's, it's like um you can get to a really good place to where you have all these awesome habits, all these awesome lifestyle uh, modifications that you're making to like live a healthier and more fulfilling life. Yeah. But it's also not something that like as soon as you get there, you're done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We got takes work. 200, 200 years of living. Yeah. Well, and that, one thing I always say to people too is uh, you don't just brush your teeth and then you go to the dentist. Right. Like, Takes maintenance. Some people, some people do. They floss only. Yeah, right. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> but that's true, man. I mean, you take better care. I, I remember I bring up Dr. Zell again because mm-hmm. there's one video he has where he was like, man, I wish I could go back to when like, God was making people and I wish that God would make people's spine stink. Just like just like if you don't brush your teeth, your mouth stinks. Like, oh man, you gotta get adjusted, baby. Like, yeah, <laughs> dude, I, that would be like, it would, that'd be so cool. Like, dang, your spine stinks, bro. You gotta go get in there, man. For sure, or even more of like a. I mean, but some people do have those, those signs where it's like, they, like they have those signs, but it's not like. Yeah, it's not. Uh-huh. It's not as a visceral as stinkiness, but like visually, yeah. it's stinky sometimes. Like, dang, like you know. You walk funny. Punch over, walking funny, like, yeah. whatever. It's, uh, you, got, you know, offensive to more than one sense. One of the senses. That's true. That's true. Nobody likes to hunch over and walk with a walker. No. There ain't no, there ain't no QOL. But that's, uh, you know, going back to, like, the dental community, they do a really good job at, um, at educating people about, like, mm-hmm. how to really help themselves, at least as far as maintenance goes. And their oral hygiene. Yeah, I mean, we need to just cop that. I don't know how. So that you know how it came about when somebody said you need to go to the dentist two times a year. Mm-mm. Do you? It was from this guy back in like the 1600s, I think. He wrote some manuscript that talked about seeing your dentist, and he estimated twice a year. And ever since then, it's been like the rule of thumb. Wow. Like. I don't remember his name or anything like that, but when I was reading through it, because the like you said, the dental model is very good at educating their patients, and I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they pervaded it, everything like that. But if we can make that in some sense for the spine, at the very least, we get adjusted twice a month. Huh? At the very least, everybody needs to get adjusted twice a month. Twice a month. I always tell though, like. If you ever meet other entrepreneurs or business owners, I'm like, you got to get in here at least twice a week because we know we know the stresses that come, man. Oh, for sure. I'm just saying, like, as like, a, if you're the healthiest person on the planet, or like oh, you're yeah. like the epitome of health and you don't have any problems, you still need to be seen at least twice a month. Hundred percent. Right. At like, the very so, least. Oh yeah. So I think like uh, they do a really good job at uh, like you just said, like 
having like there's aspects of of uh, being a business owner to where you got to be able to sell and, and sales is something that isn't always sexy or like it's not something that uh feels gratifying in a way but something yeah. that is important because you got to understand how to help people help themselves and yeah. uh, i think that kind of goes hand in hand with that to where you really got to be able to eloquently like things that like you know um not at a place of fear though right you got to do it in a place that like it provides hope that like you have all this room for growth to to really improve and um you make these changes and you really commit like this can happen for you like this is this yeah. is all a potential that you have inside of you and we all have different potentials and ways that we can uh exact futures for ourselves that are in some ways better some ways worse um but it's up to you who's sitting here right now in the seat to make that decision um, yeah that's cash. That's money, dude. I like that. End off. I want to end off on that um, because that potential is the key factor. Yeah. Um, we all have the potential to break the wheel. It starts with them. It starts with us. Um, so keep that chip on your shoulder. Restore hope. Break that wheel, y'all. Um, if you guys like this episode, please comment, share, um, let your friends know that to be a good fighter as well, we put in the work. Uh, put the rounds in. Yes, sir. By the way, get your strikes in. It does wonders for your practice and for your adjustments. Heck yeah. Dr. Nash and I have been doing the uh, strike challenge, dude. I get winded now after, man. I dude, I was sweating. That challenge. <laughs> I I've been doing it with any of my workouts. And, like, before, um, I mean, now we're getting up there in volume, right? So, like. Yeah, exactly. Yep. No matter what I did that day, if it's legs or upper body, one way or the other, <laughs> Ooh, that's the you gotta take a breather <laughs> for real. Um, it's, it's a good conditioning aspect, though. Um, yes, sir. But uh, yeah, I mean, hum humble humbleness is not something to. to I mean, like you got to be humble, right? You got to have some humility, but in a way, you can't be too humble to the point where you're not a. You have that. Uh, I don't know. You, like, like you said, man. I mean, like we, like we've been talking this episode. You gotta have, that, you gotta be humble, but you gotta have a chip on your shoulder. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, man. Best of both. Uh, like you said, brother. Help us, uh, help us out. Give us a like on uh, social media, social media pages. Gates here at uh, um, well, Gates like Mayor. Yeah. Uh, yep. And follow me on Gates Mayor underscore DC as well. Yeah, and. You know, for me, Complete Connection Chiropractic and uh, DC Nash T on Instagram. Um, and always, like always, reach out if you have any questions or any way we can help oh, you. Oh, for sure. You know, if anybody's looking um, to graduate and uh, open up their own practice, I mean, we both have some insight on some stuff to make maybe uh, that you can uh, help yourself out with. So, Come shadow. Dr. Nash ain't too far from me. He's a he's got three a hours from trip. Davenport. So, yeah. Anybody that's, that goes to uh, Cleveland, I'm about three hours away from there, too, actually. That ain't bad, dude. I know. I'm I'm only actually I think like four or five hours from it. like not a bad trip, you know. Yeah, it's an overnighter. Once we get a house, students, you're welcome to stay at my place. <laughs> Just let them stay at the practice. Get out, get That's out true. Yeah, back. They, gotta, uh, they gotta soak it in, right? Right, hundred percent. Get your money's worth. Yes, sir. Cool. All right, Doctor Nash. We'll we'll call it a day. Connection, intention, and purpose for y'all. Get it good, good fighters. Our thief, our dealer. Yes, sir. Choose your destiny.